We had another wild week in college football. Time to break it all down and go a little deeper than just the box score. Hi, I'm Cinder Sports Noah Kozlov, and for that, of course, it's first and ten with Sporting News college football writer Matt Hayes. Matt, it looks like we've got a Heisman favorite, huh? Well, if you, if you were to believe the folks at the mothership there at ESPN, we'd certainly have a Heisman leader. His name is Denard Robinson, and frankly, um, if you're going to have a Heisman leader, why not have a Heisman leader that throws jump balls? That's the way we're looking at it right now. Because if you're looking at that game, very exciting. Denard Robinson, fun player to watch. He throws jump balls, Noah. That's how they won the game. If the Notre Dame secondary had any clue about covering jump balls, it would have been 42-10 to 10 Notre Dame. There's no way on God's green earth that he's the Heisman Trophy leader right now. If you're going to talk about wow factor, talk about the wow factor of Robert Griffin in his five touchdowns against TCU in the season opener. That's wow factor. Right. The, the wow part of this game was the fact that Michigan actually won this game and that Notre Dame gave it away. So let's go a little bit further and talk about another quarterback or just the quarterback situation in the Big Ten at Penn State. What's going on? Well, you know, I think we've been focused now for the last three or four weeks on Joe Paul and his leg and his injury. And is he going to coach in the press box or is he going to coach down on the field? You know, and that's kind of taken away from the fact that they have no quarterback. And the worst part of all is they've known they've had no quarterback since January 2nd since the day after the Outback Bowl game, when Matt McGloin threw five interceptions against a Florida team that was completely and utterly in the tank, Noah, that anyone could have beaten, and Penn State couldn't because they couldn't have a quarterback throw the ball straight. They also do that Rob Bolton, the talented freshman that played last year, then didn't play at the end of the season when McGloin played, is a guy who thought, I may not play here. So for the entire summer, he was debating whether he was going to play at Penn State or not, and this is what they came into the season with, and there were no changes. That, to me, is a coaching decision, though. That's a bad coaching decision. So instead of worrying about where Joe plays in the press box or on the sidelines, maybe we should worry about his decision to, okay, we're going into this season with McGloin and Rob Bolton. All right, so that could be the worst coaching decision when you take a look at the entire season as a whole. How about the worst coaching decision in week two? Well, actually, this coaching decision could be the worst coaching decision <laughs> of the season, of career, of a lifetime. If you weren't sleeping at 1.30 in the morning, on Friday night, Saturday morning, Noah, you missed Gary Pinkle make the coaching move of a lifetime. 12 seconds to go. Missouri needs a field goal to win the game. He's got his All-American kicker out there, the kid who's made 47 of 51 field goals prior to that kick, including a 47-yarder in that game in the third quarter against Arizona State. He's got a 48-yarder to win the game. What does Gary Pinkle do? He ices his kicker. Not once, but twice. And here's the best part of all, Noah. At the end of the game, after the kick is missed, after Missouri goes to overtime and loses the game to Arizona State that they could have won, Pinkle's asked about why he iced his kicker twice. And the response is, we were trying to get Vontaze Burfecht, who, as we all know, is a noted wild man, to jump off sides and get us five extra yards so the kick would be easier. The kid kicked a 47-yarder, which is one yard shy of 48, if my math is correct, Noah in the third quarter. And Pinkle freezes his kicker twice to get five more yards. Genius. Matt Hayes is always good from 50 yards and in, and his math always right. Good talking to you, Matt. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Noah.